Meanwhile, we are going to be watching Kanye West uh, talk to Lex Friedman. The conversation with Ye, the legendary artist, producer, and designer, formerly known as Kanye West, on this, the Lex Friedman podcast. And get bro, it's literally, look at this, bro. Look at this. The Holocaust starts at the 25th minute and goes on for one hour and 14. Holy f he talked about the Holocaust for an hour. There is no shot that is productive. It's your perspective on Because now I have friends that can give a perspective. Like when I would work on albums, I had other friends that worked on albums and they would give me their perspectives on it. The thing is, okay, you're going to ask me different questions, but I'm about growing and building and bringing the idea to life. So when I see you, I say, oh, this guy understands how to hire engineers. Where I'm coming from, coming from Hollywood, coming from press, coming from media, all of the guys, you know, that so many of the guys that have been like voices and faces and talking heads, or whatever, have not understood how to engineer product. And that's the reason why I was able to jump past everyone in the entertainment field and become, um, you know, whatever the net worth is, 11 billion. I'm going to stop putting the whole black thing on my worth. Like, let's just see where I am on the scale of life, because that's a cop out for me to say, rich is black guy of all time, because that's feeding into the same, you know, trauma economy that Black Lives Matter feeds into. That's why I love and respect engineers. That's the only thing that we really need to teach in school is engineering. We don't- Bro, you're a musician. You literally work with creative people every day. What the f are you saying? This is exactly like Steven Crowder, a drama student, constantly promoting STEM Lord shit and saying, oh, people are getting gay ass art degrees in school. You're fucking Steven Crowder and you are Kanye West. We don't need to teach history. We don't need to teach anything that is subjective. It needs to only be engineering taught in school and everything else needs to be recessed. As an engineer, I love hearing you say that, but to push back, the interpretation of history might be subjective, but history has some facts and they're useful to give a grounding to the way you do engineering. I don't 100% believe in anything, any concept of the future or any concept of history because history was just written by the victors. Yeah, that's so, right. So, uh-oh. Well, true, that is a uh-oh moment. Now that we know they talked about the Holocaust for an hour. This stuff happened on the day that later that day is reported wrong. So how wrong is something reported a thousand years ago? And why would we argue about something that's not in the now? Bro, for those of you who are saying like, oh, that's true though. It is true. Yeah, I know. Haven't you learned anything from conspiracy theorists at this point? They always say one true thing and then they use that as an anchor to say a f load of insane shit me saying uh oh to that is because i know while that statement in and of itself is true history is written by the victors because that's the only thing that everyone can agree upon is that it is now right now yeah well you try not to make the mistakes of the past that's the usefulness of history the, the limited usefulness the, of history. the biggest mistake from the past that we keep making is looking at the past and the leadership is changing because you have Elon as a leader, Ye as a leader, and we are the top leaders. We're more influential than the presidents. So you're a human being with engineering challenges before you, with stem player, with parlor. What's the hardest thing in front of you on the engineering front? That's the first sentence that any of our species needs to hear when they're born. You are a human being with engineering challenges and i consider consider challenges to be opportunities yeah. in front of you yeah literally like let, let me see a piece of paper. i need to write that down that's the beginning <laughs> that's of, of our new species constitution <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna do the page, paper like He's this writing wide, manifestos bro screen. this this for ridley uh uh you bro this is hilarious oh my god all the stem lords are gonna love this shit not you guys, obviously. All you fucking STEM weirdos in the chat are obviously ones who have been introduced to the humanities not by another, like, STEM lord who doesn't understand this concept at all, but someone like myself. But, like, I know for a fact some of you motherfuckers in comp side, you have friends that are Jordan Peterson fans, you have friends that are Lex Friedman fans, you're gonna watch the interview and go, oh my god, I love yay. In human existence. <laughs> it's a good line. Because who would you say is the top? It's top writer in human existence, we know who it is. That's subjective.
Who's that? It's factual, though. That? It's like, who's who, okay, so who's the top person in tech history? Wow. There's a non-subjective answer to both of those. Both of those people have influenced 30% of our existence. So the influence is, a, is the main metric I, of greatness. Okay, one okay. person, yeah. 30% of our language was, the English language was written by them. The other person, 30% of the products we use was led by them. So there's not our language. Come on. Oh, Shakespeare. Okay. Shakespeare. Fine. What the fuck is, is and it was in the product, 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 product. Look, look. No shot. No, he's not going to say Steve Jobs, bro. Stop. This motherfucker did not put Steve Jobs next to Shakespeare, bro. Oh, my. Oh, stop. And no, Shakespeare did not invent 30% of our spoken language, obviously. But, you know, he was influential. Also, but if you're looking at influence, Genghis Khan, that metric is so silly because then you can put Hitler on that list. You know what I mean? If, like, all you're looking at is, like, world-changing human beings, then anyone that's ever had an epic rap battle of history written about them is going to be on that list, good or bad. Steve Jobs. Yeah. You put Steve above, like, Elon's of the world? Because Steve He's is a packed. designer, not... He's a design and engineer, but he's a design. He's a visionary in the design space. Well, I would lean to him because I'm not an engineer, right? So I'm more like. But then you're an engineer. If if. Okay, first of all, this man correctly calling out Steve Jobs being unfairly brought up here is hilarious because he follows it by saying the Elons of the world. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize Elon Musk had, had been the main inventor of all of the products that he is known for, including but not limited to Tesla. No shot, dude. Elon Musk and Steve Jobs are closer to one another than you would think. They're just marketers. And I would say Steve Jobs is better at marketing than Elon was, for sure. And, you know, Elon is more so in the interest, more so interested in marketing himself for some fucking weird reason. And so many things are subjective. I always talk about this. It's like, you know, people are arguing, like, is Emily Ratajkowski the hottest, you know, person? And I'm like, that's such a subjective thing but like if you go yeah except like you do say that about uh kim kardashian thank you for the five gift oh and shoot three pointers with steph curry it's not subjective right or if you go and compare bank accounts with elon it's not subjective and another thing that's not subjective porn <laughs> what about what dick size it's not subjective you can measure what Why are you going there? You say, you know what's not subjective? Pete's Davidson. 10 inches, man. It's thick too. I heard it's girthy. What the fuck's that about? I got penis on the mind, dude. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but porn is more about uh, more than just dick size and greatness is more than the size of the bank account, right? So it's, there's a subjective. Well, greatness on. is subjective though. Right. So you do, do you care about the stuff that's objective or subjective more? Because greatness to me is what matters. The bank account comes and goes. The impact on our society, like you said, social engineering, the impact on the collective intelligence of our species, that what permeates throughout the rest of time. I like what you said, the impact. I'm taking notes. So th this is the first time I heard you say the word engineering at least so many times, which I love hearing. So this is where you're at. You're like that newborn. You're a being with engineering opportunities. Yeah. And we're all a, a newborn because in Christianity, we say born again. We're all newborns and everyone can, uh, everyone shall, I like the word can, uh, shall. The engineering talk coming from someone who is in the artistic world, like Kanye West, who like routinely works with designers, artists, fashion students, shit like that, is pretty funny because once again, there are two different yays. The one yay is like conservative, red conservative agitprop, wanted to believe it, and regularly is like claiming that it's uh, conservative values. The typical shit that uh, people say like, oh man, we, we need the STEM field to be way more important than it actually is. He sounds like an art major that fell into NFTs and crypto over COVID and now he's preaching the tech. Yeah, exactly. But then also on the other side, like he's working with people that are in the arts. Oh, the only thing about Shell is like, 
dic- it kind of dictates and can kind of kind of lets people off the hook. Mm-hmm. So I haven't found the perfect post Shakespeare and post Steve Jobs and post Elon and post Ye and post Drake way to communicate this. Um, but we update and we do. And what the current media structure, no, it's not actually nothing that's holding us. There's nothing actually holding us back because I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I just want to point something here, by the way, because people are going to be confused by what I said about STEM. Of course, I'm pro STEM, okay? Obviously, one of the people I love the most on this planet is a fucking STEM lord of the the worst kind. I have no issue with that. But I'm not anti-humanities. I'm not anti-arts. A lot of people do not understand that. These people are not pro STEM. They're anti-humanities and they're anti-art. That's the issue. Half the reason why I can uh, deal with all of you annoying STEM lords in the chat is because of my 31 years well, 29 years of experience dealing with exactly chatters like you in my immediate vicinity in the form of my dumbass brother. Like, I grew up with a dude who literally says he doesn't need to read or write well because he's an engineer. He was doing this in, like, eighth grade. He's like, yeah, whatever, dude. It doesn't matter. Are you Are you happy? Absolutely. I'm just here. It's difficult to make me unhappy. Now, I could deal with frustrations. But when those frustrations are, it's like when you've allowed people to be in your life that shouldn't be there and then they do the thing you knew they were going to do and you're screaming at them, but you really need to scream at yourself. Happiness. Dude, how are they going to go from happiness to the Holocaust, by the way? This is wild, dude. Look at this. There's like a there's like a brief one minute intermission between happiness and the holocaust which takes up an hour oh god my heart's not going to be able to handle this everything that i'm doing is for the sake of the human race there's things in capitalism there's things in technology well tech technology and original human species can exist in a peaceful way as long as the people that know how to make robots aren't using their robots to control the humans. Lex? It definitely is something you have to be concerned about. He's like, come on, Lex, tell me what's going on. How are we getting to the Holocaust? Oh my God. Oh my God. About as we become more technologically savvy, that my friend <laughs> is why engineering isn't everything. That you have to desperately study the lessons of history. In Nazi Germany, science was used to create atrocities. Engineering, the same. Engineering could be a tool of war. We, we are still in the Holocaust. Uh, a friend, a Jewish friend of mine said, oh, come go visit the Holocaust Museum. And my response was, let's visit our Holocaust Museum, Planned Parenthood. Oh my, okay. Well, there's no, I don't think Lex Friedman will allow this to happen. Look, he's a podcaster first, human being second. But there are certain things that I assume he is not going to allow to happen. I I don't think, I think he's going to push back on this. With all due respect, I grew up in the Soviet Union. I'm Jewish. Parts of my... I can't, oh God, just... Center right people don't talk about the Holocaust without, uh, you know, tying it back to the Soviet Union and how bad, uh, you know, communism is. Challenge, impossible difficulty. But let's continue. Family perished in the in the Holocaust of Nazi Germany. I have to push back that there is a difference of the atrocities at that scale at that time. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hold up, you're Jewish? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm an entire people. I was going to say the number, that's the difference. It's not the number. Because six million, well, also, African Americans are actually Jew also. The lost tribe of I Israel. I push back on that too. Okay, so. Well, <laughs> there you go. That, see, I, I fucking told you. I, like, there's no shot. This is the difference between someone like him and someone like Candace Owens, who's like more invested in the the right wing uh, ideological project 
maybe not personally, but at least like her entire money is tied to it, right? Candace Owens' money is tied to being a loyal soldier to the right-wing ideological project. I would even say that for Ben. But even Ben Shapiro would not let uh, a lot of this get through. Lex, on the other hand, is not as uh, overtly or as far right as any of these other guys are. He is supposed to maintain this uh, center right, but definitely like uh, his portrayal of himself is like, I'm a centrist type uh, perspective. He's too MIT to just like let this shit slide. Everyone came from Africa. I am African. I'm basically African American. Right. We're brothers. And we're both Jew. And we're brothers. <laughs> so <laughs> we're human. Six million people died in the Holocaust, over twenty million. Okay, so he's trying to push he's trying to push away by being like, We're both brothers. When he says we're both Jew, he's like, Well, I'm gonna push back on that, but we're both brothers. Have died by the hands of abortion. And the media promotes the my body, my choice, which is actually still a promotion for Planned Parenthood. 50% of black deaths a year is actually abortion. It's not, it's not the cop with the knee. It's not black on black violence and gang violence. It's not heart attacks. It's actually abortion. The most dangerous place for a black person in America is in their mother's stomach. There's 900 to a million abortions in the United States a year. I hear you. But there's something about the rape, the torture, the murder of children, women, men, the complete, complete humiliation and just the suffering that was endured during World War II. That's it's what we deal with on our TVs right now with black people. Uh, Soros would use black trauma economy for, to win an election. And what I love is having a healthy conversation. And as opposed to there's certain things, you know, boom, this drops, people are going to have pussy hats on. Boom, this drops, it's going to be, you know, black people and white people with signs. Boom, this drops. So, hey, China, hey, left agenda, hey, what we're going to do is say that our species can have a healthy conversation. Do you, it's Can I just linger on this? Because when you say Jewish media, it there's a echo of a pain that people feel that reminds you, you're, saying entire... it, you're saying it's redundant, right? Huh, no. <laughs> no! No, man! He's not saying that! What the fuck did he think was gonna happen? Oh, no! Dude, he's like, okay, what the fuck? <laughs> what did Lex Friedman think was gonna happen in this conversation? He said, you think it's a redundancy. No, I'm not saying it's redundant. I'm, I'm saying it's redundant. You're saying it's redundant. <laughs> it's a redundant. I'm saying it's something it's that thing. I'm saying that it's something that Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister of Nazi Germany, said. I'm saying it's been said so many times, in order to murder and torture. I don't know. It. it I think like. Kanye was geared into thinking that like maybe by Elon or something that like this was going to be like a very positive interview or something. I, I, I think like he's still at this stage unaware that Lex Friedman is pushing back on what he is saying. This is the first time that I think Kanye West is having like a genuinely contentious conversation. This is like genuine pushback uh, more than even what Pierce uh, Morgan was doing. Sure. Jewish people that I would, it just rings wrong I, and that's the just thing just like the n word when spoken by people that, that have the same skin color as me it reminds people of a very dark time i know if if jewish people would accept that i'm jew then they would see what i'm saying in a different way they would hear it in a different way but see the people you saying you're jewish that no i'm jew not jewish jewish jew jew jew. means like that of a jew i'm saying i'm jew you're jew blood of christ that orthodox comes christian from, right <laughs> but that the are you um are you a follower of the philosophy of the black hebrew israelites because that's where the idea comes from not all of those folks are extremists but some are extremists i'm a follower of the idea i have a vague idea that all people came from africa but what I wanted to do, yeah. Now, okay. What? Now I could Andy Wait. Kaufman this about seven more minutes, yeah. and then tell you what it is. What I, should what I the whole count? Point is. Let's count seven minutes. No, oh, what do I, less. I, I did this to do a spoiler alert. Sure, spoiler. 
What's the first thing I said at the beginning? I said they shouldn't teach this in school. History. The history because what they oh, no. do. Oh, no. Remember when I spoiler alerted and said, oh, no, when he said history was written by the victors. And then there's an hour long conversation about the Holocaust. Last week, when we watched one of the interviews, the first time we went in a drink champs, I said the one part that Kanye has not tied yet. The one note that he has not hit yet is Holocaust denial, which he's like teetered on by, you know, making references to it and only uh, like kind of hand waving away and be like the real Holocaust is still happening. And it's happening to like black babies inside of mother's wombs or whatever, which is like, you know, pretty, pretty bad. Uh Oh, what schools are doing is exactly what the CIA does with Pixar films and Disney films. They make Bambi's mom die in the beginning. Right. And off that pain comes a purchase of ice cream. Off that pain comes, I need some more toys. Uh, now we're the orphans of capitalism to make us be consumers. And we need to be a community, not just consumers. And in every interview, when I say, well, why do I get to the point of putting up the tweet? Uh, no one wants to understand why I got to that point. You right? had pain. You had pain. Yeah. but you no one, pain in your heart. But the let's say this. Undoubtedly, Jewish people have a lot of movies about that pain and black people have a lot of movies about the pain of slavery, right? It's almost impossible to find a movie about Mansa Munsa. When you go to the African History Museum in Washington, DC, it doesn't start with the idea of Africans being kings. It starts with the idea of Africans being slaves. But here's another Okay, this part is actually not wrong, even though what he's about, like the point that he, I assume he's going to launch off of is going to be weird. Look, no, no, no. G chat is way too fucking Caucasian to understand the point that he's trying to make here as it pertains to black works of art. Part of it, is, and I myself am very Caucasian as well, obviously, but part of what he's trying to say here is that there's a reason why Black Panther was, uh, was, uh, seen as a massive success and it had like a a pretty solid cultural impact on people even though it was a marvel movie right there are rarely ever black stories that focus on black success in general even if it focuses on black success it's not exclusive to uh black success in a black way it's always black people succeeding in a white world so his take about monsa Munsa is not wrong i think I'm I'm trying to be as charitable as possible to what he's trying to say, which, by the way, he will inevitably ruin and also, uh, you know, somehow tie back to fucking Jewish people or something. This was said to me one time and it stuck with me as a family member of mine. With Africans, how many times you've heard like a rapper, or, you know, talk about we were kings. That's incorrect. If we're Jew. If we're Jew, and since we are, we weren't the kings. We were the slaves that Moses freed. Africans have always said, we've heard, you've listened to rap music and hear black people say, we kings, we blood of the... Bro, what the fuck? Okay. Like, he just, he just shot across at, at like, black Israelites and, and hoteps. He countered it, but then also his brain is so strange, dude. The things that he says, like, as Felix Biederman uh, also correctly pointed out last week, he was like, he has somehow arrived at an anti-black form of, like, black Israelite theory, a theory that revolves around black supremacy. It just doesn't make any sense. What, what he's saying makes, I feel like I'm losing my mind a little bit trying to comprehend what he's trying to say. The pharaohs and... If we are Jew, then we weren't. We were the people that Moses freed. And when we talk about, have you heard black people talk about 400 years of slavery? Mm -hmm. All right. That is in rep. And we're having this history lesson, right? I and thought history doesn't matter. You're exploring ancient history and drawing deep wisdom from it. And at the same time saying, we need to forget all of it. We need to put that behind us. Absolutely. We need to forget it and we need to move forward. There is so much wisdom to draw from history, even the 20th century. Look at this, communism. 
without l the lessons of history of the 20th century, communism sounds like a great idea, except that some of the worst atrocities conducted by Stalin and Mao that killed 50, 100 plus million people, not just killed, tortured, starvation, where people, the uh, cannibalism, they ate each other, they ate their children. There's, there's just dark people people should read some books on this on the uh holodomor See, in the 1930s but i disagree with that lesson we would and now it's becoming more popular I'm not, marxism I'm, and communism i'm not disagreeing that that happened i'm disagreeing that we need to harp on the things that happened because the truth is i'm giving a fact 50 percent today of let's say you don't call black people jew right black people's deaths today is abortion today right now like that it's not racism that's too wide of a term it's kanye west is doing holocaust revisionism by comparing the holocaust to like abortions okay a consensual medical process between a consenting adult who has full bodily autonomy that is being informed by their doctor providing a medical service to the Holocaust. That is an insane comparison to make. Why the fuck is Lex Friedman being like, bro, you know what's really fucked up about what you're doing with this Holocaust revisionism? Communism and cannibalism that happened under communism, which led to 100 million deaths. What the fuck is happening in this convo? Just stick to what he is saying. He's like, bro, I get you. <laughs> He's like, listen, I get what you're saying. I hate communism. You should hate communism. I hate it. That's kind of right wing. Come on, dude. It's genocide and population control that black people are in today in America that is promoted by the music and the media that black people make that Jewish record labels get paid off of or media companies, uh, record labels and media company also. So let's give it a wider, you know. I agree with Mar Martin Luther King. I have a dream too. Martin Luther that King one day was... you would not be judged <laughs> by the color of your skin or your race, black or Jew, but by the content of your character. All the assholes that fucked you over in the music industry, fuck artists over in the music industry are individuals. They're not Jews. Can you, can they, you say they, they are, they are Jewish. It doesn't, they're human with opportunities and they took those opportunities i don't so, care if so they're do, do, jewish do you feel like Jew i should release that pain and separate it yes okay so if that if, okay <laughs> so if you're saying i should release that pain and separate it then i'm telling you you should release your pain and separate it and we could get to this the list of how you are being with engineering opportunities. That's 100%. I see what you're doing. That's exactly <laughs> what you're doing. The pain, I'm gonna let it go. Engineering challenges, I get it. One of the problems you highlight is people get fucked over in the in the music industry. This isn't a real conversation. Neither of these two are actually speaking to each other. You can't convince me these two recognize uh, who they're speaking to. I think Lex Friedman is has conflicting interests in this conversation. On the one hand, he wants to push back on the the obvious Holocaust revisionist takes. Uh, he wants more clarity on the anti-Semitism, maybe address it, maybe counter it. But on the other hand, he also wants to continue having a two-hour long podcast. So those two conflicting thoughts are at odds here, and it seems like the podcast brain side of his brain is forcing him to engage in the lightest form of pushback he possibly could. And get fucked over in the media. Get fucked over all over the place. They created, there was a, there was a... Oh, by the way, yeah, Megaphonics. The problem with Lex is he's a capitalist talking to a capitalist about what is clearly a problem with capitalists. So instead of bringing up capitalistic opportunity, he's trying to hedge it in some sort of no, no, no. It's not that they're Jews, bro. It's such a half-assed and easily dismissible critique. It just plays into Kanye's paranoia. The, the, the reality is you are correct on this, okay? Both Lex and Kanye love capitalism. When you both love capitalism and Kanye West is saying like, no, no, no. It's the bad capitalists that are doing this because they're Jewish. Lex can only counter and say, no, no, no. It's not the bad capitalists that are doing this because they're Jewish. It's just individuals. They're just individually choosing to be bad. Some people choose to be bad. Some people choose to be good. 
exploitative capitalist practices are conducted by individuals. But the reality is those individuals on their face, if you were to look at them, would not be coming across as bad people. And I don't even think that they are bad people from the same way that we understand it. They're people who are still very much operating within the confines of the system that was presented to all of us as the norm and the best system possible. Yes, we regularly do ascribe morality to the, the effects of capitalism and the people who suffer under uh, the capitalist organization of the economy. But ultimately, if everyone is operating on the same blank slate and most people are, the overwhelming majority of people are, looking at capitalism and saying, no, that's good, actually. They're not operating outside of the boundaries. They're not doing anything that's like overtly wrong as it pertains to the system, which is how you arrive at like weirdo anti-Semitic thoughts about this, uh, this sort of thing to begin with. There needs to be another motivating principle behind why these guys are being so exploitative because it's certainly not capitalism. Yeah, motherfucker, it is capitalism. The starting point is bad if you look at it. If you think exploitation is bad, then the starting point of capitalism is bad. If you look at the class, if you look at the system from a class perspective of v workers who are being exploited across the board uh, by capital owners, then yeah, you're going to think that that's bad. But if but if you, on the one hand, think that that's good and you yourself are a capitalist, you have workers, you're a good boss, you believe that money and wealth is a good thing, it actually shows uh, how good you are as a person when you are successful, then you're going to have to literally point the finger at something else, something that's not tangible, something that is uh, something that you can grasp at. Jewish trainer that brought me to the hospital and put in press that I went to the hospital. I got, I know friends that off of exhaustion, a Jewish doctor, they diagnosed Why do you keep me saying Jewish? because they were right. Diagnosed me with bipolar disorder and shot me with medication and put me on medication, then put it in the press. And every time, even if I wore the wrong color hat that a is not supposed to wear, right. Then they immediately say he's off of his shit, he's off his meds, he's off his rocker, and it's literally used as a scarlet letter control mechanism for the people understand the kids, the colleges, the high schools. What do you think they put me right now? They put me as the prophet, not the leader. It doesn't have to be the leader, right? Because we holy fuck, bro, his mania goes crazy. He's saying the real racism is that a black person can't be a Donald Trump supporter, which is wild. And then he's saying that everyone is controlling, people are controlling me when I behave in a way that is inconsistent with what uh, black people are supposed to behave, which is what he's claiming is, uh, you know, they have to be Democrat or whatever. Then they blame it on his, uh, blame it on his mania. The unfortunate reality in this situation, though, is that if that's not the case, if it's not mania, what he refuses to recognize, I think is that a lot of his defenders also use mania as a way to try and deflect away. That's the reason why they say, oh, it's, it's just mania. That's why the, the, the larger analysis here is that it's not just bipolar disorder, it's not just his mania, but it's also his own personal belief system that has been uh, rewritten at this point. His mania might have opened the door up to him believing in like as a vulnerable person when he was in a vulnerable, vulnerable mental state where he was looking for any kind of, any kind of defense any kind of support he possibly could. I think people took advantage of that and basically rewired him to believing in these like weird conservative uh, takes, insane conservative takes that go all the way to fucking uh, anti-Semitic conspiracies. I don't think he realizes that that's almost an out for him though. But he's like, oh no, people blame it on my mania. It's like, yeah, people who defend you also blame it on your mania because they're not upset that you're a black person wearing a red hat. They're upset that you're wearing the red hat. They're upset that you're defending right-wing conspiracies. He cannot comprehend that because he can't see anything that is not immediately in front of him. He is so narcissistic that the only way for him to fucking process information is by how it impacts him personally. He doesn't think about like anti-Semitism as a larger concept. He doesn't think about like uh, defending conspiracy theories or or being this like unhinged right-wing psychopath as a concept. He only thinks about it as like, I said these words, which are true because I'm the prophet, and people responded to it in a negative way, and they didn't respond to it in a negative way because the words I said were could have ever been like, wrong because everything i say is correct they responded for some other reason and that other reason must be the top of the hour ad break because at the top of the hour there's a 60 second ad break that was a 10 10 that was a, i geared you up so fucking hard
only to let you fucking fall through that little trap door underneath, okay? Pow, pow! Opened up the trap door. We, we need we need a more uh, intelligent Where's the person bot? to be the 452 chatters rated this ass segue an average of 9.06 out of 10. Let's fucking go, dude. Woo! That's a good segue. That was a good segue. We have to stop discussing his mental issues at this point. Racism is not symptomatic of BPD. This is harming people who are truly going through manic episodes. I have BPD. And I don't know, go off on some racist shit. No, I, I, I understand that. I, I mention that regularly. But I do think that his vulnerabilities have certainly allowed people to take advantage of him in a way that like, uh, in, in a really fucked up way that he just now personally believes, especially paired up with his like narcissism. It's not just, it's not BPD, by the way. BPD is borderline personality disorder uh, usually. And, and you're, that chatter is talking about bipolar dis, uh, uh, disorder. BPD is borderline personality. They jumped on someone who has a massive podium to spread these ridiculous uh, conspiracies off of. And now, you know, we're living in the uh, consequences of it. The leader, but at least, right? They put me as the prophet. They put me as the only person that would say this. And I'm just saying that was four Jewish members that controlled my voice because for the fact that 90% of black people in entertainment from sports to music to... It's just, I'm sorry, man. It's fucking crazy that he doesn't see that like this is exactly the same as anti-black racism, which he has also experienced in his life. Like racist people don't just exclusively assume racist thoughts or have racist thoughts for no reason other than, um you know, th that's just what they learned. They oftentimes will try to rationalize it like 1350. They try to rationalize over policing black communities with the 1350 cyclical argument they try to rationalize it by saying andrew tate has even said something like this where it's like oh well if i've only been um attacked by a, a black person well let's say not black but purple that's what he'd said if you remember that fucking famous video if i've only been attacked by black people if i've only been robbed by black people then of course i'm going to be afraid of black people like that's andrew tate's uh you know justification for uh racist anecdotes racist points of view having a racist point of view does he not realize that uh, this is the exact same justification? Like, oh, well, you know, it's it's Jewish people that fuck me over in my immediate life. So I'm just going to keep uh, mentioning that they're Jewish and keep saying that I'm going to go DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. You know, you're, you're doing the same exact, uh, exact thing. Acting are in some way tied into Jewish business people, meaning that in some way, just like if, if Rom is sitting next to Obama or Jared sitting next to Trump, there's I gotta pee. I'll be back. A Jewish person right there controlling the 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 country. The Jewish controlling that who gets the best video or not. Controlling what the media says about There's a me. Person not Jewish. Let me just say one they, thing. But they are though. That's the only thing. It just so happens that they are. It just you so happens saying that they are. That doesn't a, mean that I hate them. Yes, that yes, just yes. means that they are. But it's a it's a dog whistle, too. Let me, let me just say, as I would love to add more love to the world, I would love you to do that as a person with a big voice, with a big, powerful voice that a lot of people look up to. And when you say Jewish media, it's funny how this world works that way. When you say Jewish media or Jews are controlling the voice of black artists, black people, am, black artists, am, am when I, you say that... Am I not allowed to say it out loud? You can say it. There's a large number of people that are hurting and have anger and even have hate in their heart when they hear when they hear Jewish media, they start that hate starts being directed towards the Jewish people. Do you acknowledge that that's do you understand can you feel the hate in the world that's when that uh that comes to the surface when you say stuff like that? Okay. I I feel that when we go into therapy, my dad was a therapist, and obviously I've got some therapy skills myself. A lot of people, my music is healing. Oh, yeah. These type of spa-like existences are healing. That's like identical to Kanye West, by the I mean, uh, identical to Donald Trump, by the way. Like, my uncle was an MIT. I got some of it through osmosis. When he said, I got some of it, I thought he was going to say, like, I need some therapy myself, as you can see. He's like, nope. It's like my dad was a therapist, so you know I, I I'm also naturally gifted as a therapist. Healing, 
the color palettes I use are healing, and we can use healing words, right? What I really feel there, I feel that there's no accountability and no responsibility on Jewish people in media to at least start with owning up with the facts of what's dealt with and tell me if I say the facts out loud to, to the point of Ari Emanuel writing a letter in the Financial Times trying to take food out of my children's mouth, telling people that they're not allowed to work with me. Even Chris uh, Como or Pierce Morgan getting me to apologize and separate Jewish business people to from the families of the Jewish business. I don't think he realized Pierce Morgan was like kind of doing him a favor a little bit, but he literally was just like trying to get you to do the right thing. And when you failed to do so, when you, when you refused to do so, he was trying to make it seem like you were actually doing the right thing when you weren't. Also, the wildest part about it is that like none of this would have happened if he just didn't say Jewish businessmen and kept going at it. Because the truth of the matter is, it is businessmen. It's not Jewish businessmen. It's just businessmen. That is what capitalists do. And the exploitation that he experienced is real. The exploitation that a lot of people experience under capitalism is real. But he just can't. He can't just say it like that. He has to say, oh, man, it's, it's, it's Jews. Jewish people. Yeah, of course people are going to get mad at that because that is anti-Semitic. People, which I did. Update. I did that. That already happened. And the that way was I, a shitty apology. That wasn't really an apology. But shout so out for I that need conversation. To, I, need, great I need to conversation. get on my knees and kiss the dick of Howard Stern. And you don't uh, need to kiss anyone's dick. Uh, I don't, but that's uh, what you guys are acting like. You guys, look at that. Because you're talking about it's a shitty uh, opinion, uh, uh, apology. But where's our fucking apology? Watch this. Sorry. We don't, we don't get. Thank you. Now, what? Then, let's move on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, do I need to we, get on my knees or no? And <laughs> kiss my dick. <laughs> oh, shit. So, <laughs> just escalated quickly. So, uh, <laughs> that's escalated quickly. So, um, nice. the. Uh, <laughs> so, so what, what, no, what? no, I'm saying, where's our apology? Because you're telling me there's no right way for me to word it. So, tell me, for me, a person who's been fucked on my deals and a person that has friends that never figured out how to make shoes with a German company that couldn't tell me to wear a BLM shirt and take off my red hat. Like what would have happened if I was at Nike? Yeah. Right. Um, uh, tell me exactly. Wait, didn't Adidas just drop him today too? Dude, he said on drink champs that like he could be as anti-Semitic as he wants and Adidas will never drop him. And I don't know what the fuck the reason for that is. What is that? He also keeps bringing up that they're German. Like, he, he's hitting... Stop saying German company. Are you guys fucking stupid? Germans are literally, like... Like, he'll go to jail in Germany. If half the shit he's saying here, if he said in Germany, they would put him in jail. Germany does not fuck around with that. Germany is, like, for understandable reasons, very aggressive about any kind of, uh, any kind of, like, Holocaust revisionism. Exactly how to engineer the situation I'm I'll tell in. you exactly how you got a big voice have the balls as a man to call out the individuals don't call them Jews call them by their name and start a war against those individuals they're not Wait, Jewish but if that's the case will you help me with that sure here's the thing I don't understand why doesn't anybody just say brother there is no like secret Jewish council meeting or some shit where every Jewish person is like learning to behave a certain way. Their Judaism is not motivating them to act out in this way. It's their social conditioning under capitalism. That's precisely why you don't only see Jewish people exploiting you. You see fucking plenty of Anglo-Saxon Protestants exploit you as well. It's your anti-Semitism that makes you hyper-focus on Jewish people exploiting you, which is a subject for a different uh, conversation. But like, that's the only reason why you're only you're singling out Jewish people. And when you do, you're not even just talking about the people that are exploiting you. You're talking about Jews in general. Okay, hundred percent. Assholes are ass. Well, let me like flip that too. I don't understand the industry well. I, I I I see that people are fucking people over for sure. But how do you solve that? If you run, if you right now run the world's uh, you're doing a million things, but say you ran also a record label. 
I have ran a record label. Well, I've been ran by a record label where I was the face of a record label and had Big Sean and different people complaining to me. And I knew fuck about running a record label. I was simply just a talented producer. You'd be like, Big Sean, another guy with a big penis. Hate the guy. <laughs> A lot of lot yeah, a lot of guys with big penises on my mind lately. Producer and an influencer yes. that then started good music, but I wasn't the one running good music. How would you do it differently? This is something I, I propose. I would look at the top ten execs in three fields in sports, uh film and music. And I would look at the top ten uh clients, participant, act, talent. I would look at the top talent in each of those fields, the top 10 of them. And some of them are going to be Tom Brady. Some of them are going to be Taylor Swift. Some of them, they're not all going to be black, right? Some of them, so uh, some of them will be Adele, right? Uh, and we'll look at all their contracts transparently and we'll compare the notes and re-engineer like it's a new constitution. Yeah. Because when I told my dad when I was 19 that I was gonna get into the music industry, he begged me not to. He said, I heard it's treacherous. Now I'm in a position where I've been through it, I saw it, I went out, made some money somewhere else, I saw my name get smeared, I saw my family get destroyed, I saw my reputation get destroyed, and I'm back here to have this kind of, I'm back here as a being with engineering opportunities. So I would say, if you say as a shitty apology, what is the version uh, of the apology short of kissing Howard Stern's dick? I don't think anyone wants to kiss Howard Stern's dick. That's the whole all. point, Howard Stern. Nobody wants to kiss your dick, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> I said, by the way, I'm antagonizing you, Howard Stern. I used to be a fan of you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, me too, for the record. Uh, not super big fan, but like, you know, I recognize his space in a, a field that I'm also kind of uh, in as well. But he's such a fucking petulant little lib, dude. He's so... God, he is so fucking annoying. He's like, meh, meh, meh. I love Hillary Clinton. I love Hillary Clinton. For those of you saying radio, what I do is literally the the internet version of what... And I've said this time and time again, uh, what Howard Stern has done and what even, you know, Rush Limbaugh has done. It's just uh, my ideology is is dramatically different, but yeah, not, I'm still not, a fan. Not, sometimes now, now you're just doing clickbait like everybody else. Now you're just a sad old man, Howard. All right. Now Howard Stern, this is the first time anyone's said your name in years. Your own family doesn't say your name unless they're calling to get their bills paid. <laughs> <laughs> you're going hard. <laughs> Uh, I'm totally right about that. See, that's beautiful right there. That's much better than calling Jewish media. Call, go after individuals. Okay, go so go after individuals. And if you don't talk and, shit about me. Talk shit about me. This is great. And you know what that is? Yeah. What's that? Engineering. That's an engineer's approach. Yeah, engineers. Yeah, yeah. You should what? learn some of that. We all can use. No, man. He's trying to fucking. He's trying to teach you how to like criticize people, not like a fucking anti-Semitic child, but like an adult. But he's trying to also do it while saving a uh, face for capitalism. That's what's happening here. So he's like, yeah, it's just the individuals. It's just the individuals. I promise. It's just the individuals. It's our pain against each other. Yeah. Or we can say we're a being with engineering opportunities and we can know about history. So let me change something. We can have. A, just to be judgmental. People say, thou should not judge. I was talking to Camille Vasquez. She says, I'm very judgmental. That's what we're doing. We, we, I, I, I believe, now you could go to Bible and one thing's going to say one thing. Another thing may be contradicted in a way. And then the pastor has to unpack it. Bro, we're not even halfway through the Holocaust convo. What the fuck? How is this going to tie back the Holocaust? That we are to judge. If you look at some food and it's got a fly coming out of it, you can then judge at that point. You're supposed to. Camille Vasquez is his lawyer now, by the way, the famous defamation lawyer from the, or I mean, uh, yeah, the Johnny Depp trial is now, or she dropped him. Not anymore. Okay. never mind. That was quick. Use your better judgment. But at, whenever someone doesn't want to change something they're doing, they'll say, don't Holy judge fuck, me. That was quick. Right. But 
as a species, you called for me, you got the breakthrough. And by the way, it's only an engineer that I would respect yeah. to tell me of how, uh, of how to update how I'm communicating. Because this started off, right? I've been through all these um, interviews. Let me go to this. You said this was a uh, sorry apology. I was very specific. I said the Jewish, because by the way, it's a barrage, right? It's a thing where I don't even remember the names at a certain point, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if a, if a girl was getting raped by men, if that person is not 18, right? And she was getting raped since 14, right? And she still got this face, this super like Irina uh -oh. Shake level face, right? Uh, what she fuck? might say, I hate men. That woman may say, I hate men. She might get to that point because she was raped. On my contracts, and no one can say this is ramped up. No one, Howard Stern can't say this is ramped up. Ari Emanuel can't say this is ramped up. George Soros knows damn well that I'm not ramped up. George Soros knows, like, wow, this guy. Bro, he is so deranged, dude. Come on, Lex. You keep letting him say George Soros. What the fuck, dude? What, what are you doing? By the way, because Kanye West is not media trained enough to, to hide his like underlying anti-Semitic thoughts, you get to see, you get to peek into the George Soros conspiracies in, in a, you know, in a very honest way. He's so unfiltered that you get to see what other, what uh, oftentimes libs are saying when they're like, oh, George Soros, like that's an anti-Semitic conspiracy or whatever the fuck. It's like, bro, come on. Yeah, George Soros, billionaire, philanthropist, has a lot of like uh, weird foundations that that work in like Eastern Europe and in other places. George Soros is a billionaire is doing this as a billionaire capitalist is doing this shit for, you know, the liberal democracy, civil society foundations. Again, uplifting capitalist ideology everywhere. But the reason why he fucking keeps bringing up George Soros is because, you know, it, it ties into the same exact fucking anti-Semitic bullshit. Not only is it that, though, but also, like, why the fuck would George Soros know anything about Kanye West contracts, man? Why? Why would George Soros know anything about Kanye West contracts? He's like 98 years old, man. What the fuck does George Soros know about Kanye West's fucking music contracts, dude? Unless you literally think like all Jews are fucking getting together in a room and, and having this kind of conversation, it makes no sense. It's unhinged unless you are also motivated by the same exact fucking principles that he's operating off of, which is that like the underlying premise here is that like Jews control the media, Jews control the world, blah, 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 blah. And George Soros, Jewish billionaire. Guys like a younger guy that's looking at what I did and looking at how I control the world silently, and he's calling it out, and he's not using any of the fear tactics. I can't send his homeboys what? around him. I can't send his wife to him. This guy, that's what George Soros sees, right, when he's dealing with me. Bro, okay, this is, this is like not even manic at this point. This is just fucking paranoid, borderline uh, schizophrenic. He thinks that George Soros and him are both controlling the world and he's doing it silently. Dude, no way. This is the guy that wrote the music I enjoyed 15 years ago. No, this is this is a completely different unhinged person, dude. I mean, this is I, I see this in from like stalkers. You know what I mean? Like he literally thinks he controls the world and George Soros controls the world and they're fighting each other. Like that's what he thinks is going on right now. Right. So what you guys are actually asking me to do, I'm comparing myself to that. <laughs> 18 year old beautiful uh woman that had been mistreated by men for uh four years of her life right and you're saying you know as a man you can't blame all men and i'm saying bro he has to ask come on legs what the fuck ask him how george soros is coming after him he just literally said he controls the world he said george soros controls the world and then he said he also is silently controlling the world. And that's what George Soros is mad about, which is why he's sending his fucking family members after him. You're just going to let that hang there? That's insane. You can't blame all men. And I'm saying, as a responsible, uh, forward philosopher leader, okay, I'll drop the pain. And I will specify, because I'm up here, I lost my fucking family. That analogy doesn't work. 
That analogy doesn't work because a woman that has been like raped by men or a woman that has been uh, a, a, a victim of sexual assault and, and sexual violence by men hating all men or saying fuck all men or being afraid of all men is still coming at it from a place of being angry at the patriarchal construct that we exist under. There is no such similarities or established social constructs around Jewish control. That's the main difference. There's a legitimate reason to be upset and frustrated, especially as a victim of, of sexual violence towards a patriarchal construct. There is no legitimate reason to be like, oh man, all Jews, you know? I'm just mad because the Jews around me fucked me over, so I'm just mad at all Jews. But like, it's because I'm a victim. You should, you should let me be mad at all Jews. Like, there is no Jewish supremacist construct that we exist under in the same way that we exist under a patriarchal construct that makes it so that uh, uh, victims of sexual violence do not get to have their day in court or do not get to uh, be heard and all this other stuff. Family, yeah. I lost my kids. I lost my best friend in fashion. I lost, I lost the black community. I lost, you know, people s said I lost my mind. All of these things, lost my reputation. And I'm up here just like, I just want my family but I don't want my family to have to say what the left wants us to say. I to have to say what. This is so sad, bro. You have children too. He thinks like, again, super narcissistic, doesn't believe his actions are in any way wrong, thinks he's infallible. Therefore, it can't be my actions that have like pushed my family away from me. It can't be that I went on a fucking anti-Semitism podcast tour for the past week or past month almost now. That is the reason why companies are dropping me. It must be something else. It must be a Jewish conspiracy. It must be George Soros taking Kim Kardashian away from me. China wants us to say, I want to be an American and protect my kids and protect my wife and raise my kids as Christians and have my wife be a Christian and innovate and America made rock and roll. I want to innovate as a creative person and be a successful American. But all of that had been taken away from me. And I want you to finish everything. Hey, what? I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> everything I've heard that, that before. you <laughs> want to express to me. Get off all. I'm your, I'm your scarecrow today. I'm your, I'm your punching bag today for everything I did. And I want you to stand up for all of the hate that I'm your Al Gore when he lost the election. Remember, he almost became a punching bag for the lady that had voted on him. And she just said all this stuff. And he's like, I know, I agree with you, right? But there's nothing, you know, that he could do about it. With this, it's like things that you're saying, I agree with you. You know, it's like if you sit some kids in the, um, in the principal's office and I punch somebody, right? I took, I took my hand, right, as what it really means. Even Aria Emanuel had to say, this is a pop icon, right? And I went and just punched an entire people at one time or said that I was about to. I went like this, right? Well, you did I do got that. Blacked out, black mirrored, done, right? And it's like, what were you even going to do? And why did you go like this? I went like this because... I, I can't even do, I would I would look insane to physically show you uh, a metaphor, uh, 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 a physical representation of my last 20 years of what I've been through as a musician, as a father, and as a black person with a political opinion. A great man still <laughs> through the pain does the right thing. And I think the right thing is to not say that there's Jewish control of the media. And That's the incorrect, though. That's a fucking lie. There is. And they did come and bully me. It proved the point. No, the reason you don't say it <laughs> Why? is because the world is much bigger than the, forgive me, the narrow little world you exist in. Your impact stretches way past those little boardroom so, meetings over contracts. So what Do should I have done? What should I have done? Not say that you should no, be a strong man that doesn't mention that doesn't match your religion or people and then fight. And do you want to win this fight? Because how do I win? Not, how do we win? Call out individual people, build 
that's one way because they have a big voice. The other voice that I prefer is to build another uh, uh, label. I feel, or support I feel another like label you're, control, you're controlling my creative narrative and my, because just like how you're telling me I shouldn't have said that, do you think they were? Podcast, these should be illegal. Fuck it. Nah. No, dude. How else would you get gems like this? He said my creative narrative. <laughs> He's like, he's about to be like, Lex, you're being real Jewish right now with this media narrative control, okay? He's like one second away from dropping it, dude. Madness. People telling me I shouldn't have wore a red hat. His creative narrative is literally just like being anti-Semitic. That's insane. No, sorry, man. I got to keep up my creative uh, narrative here. You know, you're, you're controlling my creativity by not letting me be anti-Semitic. But yeah. every single person that I've sat with from the point when I wore the yeah. red hat till now has done the same thing. Sit in the principal's office and don't do what you're doing. We're in the general's closet right now together. Yeah. And I'm not, the red hat is very different. The red hat is, uh, you have a set of beliefs. You represent half the country that has. A yep, there it is. Lex, hit him with the, yeah, hit him with the center right, dude. Go ahead. Uh, uh a hope, a vision for the future of America that's very different than without any purpose whatsoever saying Jewish media, <laughs> you, Jewish I, control of the media. You said that there's no purpose, so you're taking away my history and my reason of what my purpose was. I'm saying... No, man, the red hat is also just symbolism. It just represents bad ideas. Why can't motherfuckers that have podcasts that are tailored to the Joe Rogan audience just openly state that? With the exception of like Sam Harris, who has lived the fuck up and certainly has uh, very uh, right wing takes when it comes to like Muslims and how to deal with them and shit. I have never heard any of these dudes just be like, no, nah, man, it's just it's just the truth. Like, it's reactionary. It's garbage. It is against progress. It's antithetical to civil liberties. That's what the Republican Party is based off of. That's what the reactionary commentary is based off of. That's what conservatism is built around. It is what it is. The red hat is not the reason why people are mad at Kanye West. It wasn't just wearing any red hat. He was saying a bunch of things that accompanied the red hat idea. Things like slavery was a choice. Potentially even uh, in the in the parts that they never released, like defending Hitler, apparently. We, well, we don't know. That's the that's the words of, of at least uh, some of the people from TMZ. You know what I mean? It, that's what people are mad at. You're not just wearing a red hat. And of course, understandably, Kanye went through the natural trajectory that you go through after being a conservative and moved further and further into the darker side of conservatism and have has arrived at the anti-Semitic conspiracy side of conservatism. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I feel like a lot of this is not about the Holocaust. <laughs> uh, we're separated by race, gender, socioeconomic class conversation and say, as a black owner of two tech platforms, hardware and software, I Centrist need to Norman, take they give the five, give the subs. action. Let's not call it affirmative. Let's just say I need to take action and uh, I need to take accountability and ensuring that black engineers are hired. And guess what? Hired together. Because when the black people that are brilliant are separated from our culture, we forget who we are. And we'll get to a point where... I've gotten to a point where I hate Kanye West when he says, like, I'm not saying hate Kanye West in general, but I hate it when he says, like, things that actually make sense because of, like, 98% of his commentary making no sense whatsoever. So, like, when he actually does make sense, like, oh, there is a... You know, there aren't a lot of black engineers out there. We need to do something about it. It's like it's getting lost in the sauce or worse, it's being tarnished because that message is tacked along to all the worst shit that you could imagine. Like even when he's trying to talk about black engineers, he, he does it in the weirdest way possible. If your goal is to have more black engineers and you recognize that it comes from a, a lack of adequate opportunity for, for black students in this country, then try to solve the problem at the systemic level or directly uh, in your in your life that's a great way to go about it not a single person would get mad at him people would praise him for it as a matter of fact but instead he's just like well you know there's a lot of jews here what the fuck is up with that we should just fire all the jews that's insane what, what do you mean do you feel your 
doing the thing that you stand against, which is playing victim? Aren't you playing victim to the forces in the world? I didn't play victim. I didn't even get a chance to play. I just said I was about to. I said like this, like. No, you yeah. played pretty damn well. Yeah. Bro, what the fuck? Does he think that like, because they suspended his Twitter, by the way, big conservative guy energy, just got to point out, they suspended his Twitter. He went on every fucking media outlet he could to still say exactly what he was going to say on Twitter and has been saying it in this interview itself. And he's like, oh man, I just went like this. I couldn't even do that. Like I couldn't even, bro, what do you mean? You think podcasts don't count? You think it's only, it only counts if it's on Twitter? I don't get it. Which by the way, unironically is exactly what conservatives run on all the time. They're like, oh man, I was banned off Twitter. The president being banned off Twitter is the worst thing that could have happened to free speech. <laughs> also, throw every whistleblower in jail. Fuck those un-American bastards. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean about to? You're like one of the greatest designers in history, fashion designers. You were playing. What do you, you are playing. What does that even I thought, mean? I thought you were referring to the tweet. Yeah, no, all of them there. Well, there's a full set of things that you're under attack for the tweet and everything beyond that but like you're you're blaming not blaming but you're saying that the jewish media the jewish record labels the jewish people forget jewish or not media, doesn't matter it's playing victim right ultimately i am fighting a battle in the spiritual form and anyone that believes in god and is looking at this interview would agree with that and I just so happen to be a bright part of God's army. I'm fighting for us to live. The greatest gift is life itself. I am pro-life. I am pro-God. I believe that Jesus- Bro, evangelicals just sound so unhinged, dude. Born again Christian, white evangelical Protestant sounds so fucking unhinged all the time, dude. It's crazy how normalized that kind of fucking sentiment is because of how much power they hold within like the the Republican Party as like a viable, very active voting block. But like any other group of people that aren't overwhelmingly white that say shit like this is not only cast aside, but worse, usually, even if it doesn't reflect the overwhelming majority of Muslims, for example, because Muslims are marginalized across the board, People will point to Muslims that they can find that are fundamentalist that sound like that and go, dude, look, this is how all Muslims are. They're all fucking crazy. It's wild. Jesus Christ is our Lord. And Honestly, you believe what you're saying? Yes. I don't think he's evangelical anymore. No, he has like his own new thing, okay? Evangelical, but also has like black Israelite uh, uh, takes baked into it. Savior and died for our sins. Part of the reason why I had to get Dimna, like, I didn't want to have to get, I wanted to compete with him. I didn't want to have to, like, get him. You know, when I made Stronger, I did it to compete with Timberland and, and Justin Timberlake because my fiance at that time liked Justin Timberlake just a little bit too much. So. Oh, my God, bro. What? Dude, every resentment, every instance in his life is fueled by a narcissistic desire and just petty resentments that he's had worried about like someone else out competing him sexually that's crazy which is inherently the most conservative thing you can do being a cuck is literally at the heart of like 90 percent of conservative frustrations oh immigrants are going to come here and they're going to out compete us you know what I mean? They're going to be dancing and our wives are going to want to fuck them. I don't want that. It's literally, it's that. He is so cuck pilled, dude. It's crazy. So I use the planet as a big, the future of the planet is a big piece of the way I engineer and the way we talk about where designs are going. The constraints on your design and engineering is given by the planet, by the future of the planet. Yes. That uh, could almost make Jewish people like me again. What the <laughs> fuck? Dude, just don't mention Every time it. you say Jewish people, yeah, just I don't. think I've been maybe reading a little too much about Warlord.
Dude, no, 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 no. Lex Friedman is 100% correct. Uh, uh, something that I would not say normally, okay? He is 100% correct that, like, every time Kanye West says Jewish people, it's just like, ugh, don't do it. He thinks it's fucking cute to be anti-Semitic. Yeah, it's just like he he already lost that. Like, he can't do that. Or two, but, man, I'd recommend you listen to some uh, audiobooks or read some books on the Holocaust because, like, it's heavy. It's heavy. It will put into context would the you, impact of your words. Uh, would have. you read books on the current Holocaust that black people are in? No, I mean, I read... Uh, I what read, if, what have you read about abortion? I've read um, a lot of short form writing, and I've listened to a lot of debates because mm. it's really humbling that the the question of when does life begin is a really difficult question for me as an engineer and scientist. It's a philosophical question. I mean, we could just go on population control. Not like he's right. He's right. He's right. No, 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 no. It's not. If you come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The reality is that obviously there's never going to be a consensus on any any like uh, matter that pertains to philosophy. But the reality is, yes, of course, where life begins is not an easy question to answer. Come the fuck on. If you've ever taken any kind of introductory philosophy course or any sort of philosophy course whatsoever, you already know that it is virtually impossible to answer, which is why I always tell you. Don't don't talk about that. There is no reason to talk about that. That's not how you cut policy. Policy is not cut on philosophical underpinnings. That's not how that works. Policy is cut on the impact of real human beings' lives, okay? That's how you do it. That's the reason why I always tell you, don't fucking debate that conversation whatsoever because it's always going to lock you into an unmanageable position. And that's not the reason. The reason for uh, the abortion conversation does not hinge on that. They don't even have a philosophical conversation around uh, where life begins when uh, abortion, like anti-abortion activists are fucking uh, uh, advocating for it. They already talk about life as though it is definitely beginning at conception because they claim that it's in the fucking Bible. So when he says it is difficult to have that conversation uh, or to think about that, he's right. It is difficult. The philosophical underpinnings of where life begins might be a difficult conversation to have. It might be a complex conversation with a lot of nuance, one that you will never truly arrive at an answer for. But the conversation around abortion is not about that. The conversation around abortion is about the female bodily autonomy. That's it. And that is not a difficult conversation to have. That's an easy conversation to have. Women should have autonomy over their own bodies. That's it. Don't ever try to engage in like a quick form back and forth debate. Don't try to engage in it in, uh, from a philosophical point of view because you're, uh, the other side is never going to do that. They're, they already have the, philosoph uh, the, the philosophy down because they're, they're landing on the Bible. Like if abortion is right or wrong, we could say factually the clinics were made by eugenics for population control and it is controlling the population, as is the never being. No, no. Faye Gold is saying black women. Like, Faye Gold is saying that that is what Kanye's uh, understanding of abortion is. Calm down, guys. A 25-month subscriber did not fucking say that unironically. And they're right. They're saying that, uh, like, Kanye, Kanye personally believes that, like, black women are too stupid to have no autonomy, have no decision-making processes and are um, and are being controlled by uh, population control, uh, you know, people that want to control the population. And given a 40 acres and a mule, so you don't have the opportunity. And when the people that do have the opportunity are separated from our people, our tribe, and placed in suburban communities next to, as Chris Rocco put it, the dentist, and, you know, whitewashed and made to shut the fuck up and, you know, vote left or whatever, you know, uh, is supposed to do when we make it. As opposed to saying, okay, we're building... I've never heard him say the hard R, hard R this much. Like, on his conservative arc, he's been dropping the hard R, like, way more frequently. Why is it weird if he has a listen to say it? You mean a license to say it? I mean, of course, I'm not going to be like, oh, man, he can't say it. He can say whatever the fuck he wants. The way he's saying it and everything else contextually uh, around what he is saying... 
is anti-black. So, you know, it makes it seem racist coming even from him, a black man. That was my point. And I think that's the point that, like, even uh, is echoed by a lot of people in the chat as well. Black people say ironically all the time, man. No, I know. I'm just saying that I've never heard him say it this much. Uh, I know you don't talk about it, but your hat does say 24. Yeah. Um, if you run for president, what kind of ideas would you represent? Mr. Cubob, thank you for the five gifted. That we're beings with engineering opportunities. I would represent... Okay. What? Just as you served a platform here, there's something that happened on my life. He's like, fuck, how do I tie this back to Jews right now? <laughs> He's like, he just short circuited a little bit. He was like, fuck, man, how am I going to? Mm, I got to think about this real quick. I had one rally, and in the rally, I just let people come up and I gave them a platform. It's our responsibility to listen to the pain and hear the pain and understand even when- Wait, I gotta pause this for a second. Someone said, can I use the N-word to disparage other black people like he's definitely not being ironic like that other chatter suggested? No, he is being ironic, but he is his irony is still uh, in that situation. If you look past the irony, he is still using that as a, as a way to disparage black people. Yes. Like he he's using it in the ironic way for sure. Still. Cause he's claiming like, you know, liberals are the real racists that say, uh, you know, uh, the N word with a hard R uh, can't wear the MAGA hat. But the overarching statement behind that is still that like, um, you know, in order to break through that monolith, you have to be a Republican and a racist. And that resentment is still there. Yes. It's the same shit Candace Owens does, by the way. Like, identical. When we're the ones that cause the pain. Like with my tweet. It's my responsibility to hear you and understand why you feel like that. But it's our responsibility as a people to understand each other. To give people a voice. People need the voice. And even right now, what I'm doing or how God is using me, I'm showing where our voices are being muted. There's professors that are actually intelligent, actually have multiple degrees that have been canceled from their schools. Oh, and they don't no. have a music industry or a fan base oh, or shoe no. design. Bro, he knows his audience, bro. He knows. No, no, no. He's too... Bro, he has too much clarity for, for anyone to be like, oh, man, well, you know, maybe Kanye's, like, manic here. That statement right there alone makes all the other, like, anti-Semitic shit way more damning. Bro, he just, what, you think he doesn't know about the fucking, you know, the, the Lex Fridman podcast? You, you think he just, like, dropped that for no reason? Come on, dude. And, or a smoking hot ex-wife to complain about. They've just got the truth of what they saw and what they dedicated to this country and to education that has been muted by schools that have been taken over with an agenda. And so you're, you want the brightest minds to be these professors, and then you mute them, and they have nowhere to go. And you might get a guy now that went from being someone's favorite professor to he's working at Starbucks. Like, like he was back at school or like he was back in high school. You know, I wonder right there when I say these jokes, is it something that I, cause I do feel like laughter is the key engineering and laughter, right? Is the key to peace. I feel like humor is the way we avoid so much suffering in the world. It's the way to, it, it's like a catalyst yeah. for love. Like it's a way to, so, so, People that have gone through some of the darkest trauma that I've ever met so through war, I just came back from Ukraine. They're laughing. They're they're making jokes. That's the best way to deal with dark times. I don't know what it is about like humans. I, I feel like humor that's the best way to social engineer a good future, I think is humor. 
not taking shit too seriously. That's the problem with censorship. One of the things that really suffer is humor, jokes. Maybe going too far in the jokes. You mentioned Anthony Jeselnik. That guy goes hard. That guy goes really hard, and it's great. He crosses all he crosses all the lines, and he's that's why he's a genius. And that's what people feels refreshing when he does it. I don't know what it is, but then it's like hurtful when I do it. But I'll tell you something that was interesting. I'm pretty sure Anthony doesn't like. Sorry for the assumption, but just most comedians I know didn't vote for Trump. That's interesting. I pr Not saying there aren't comedians that did, but just the ones I know, because I live in California, right? But they I don't think Kanye West has ever joked about, like, when he's talking about Jewish people, he, he seems dead serious. Like, not to be that guy, but the guy who's like, uh-huh, jokes are inappropriate. Like, I don't think he's joking at all. They have an appreciation for Trump because of the sense of humor. Yeah. I got to ask you about parlor and engineering, because I'm interested about that. Doom, 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 doom. Hey man, I'm actually trying to hold it together. You're pretty, you're pretty offensive towards towards a lot, and I'm not looking to be offensive. Oh, I really want to bring people together and get these sales I know, done. But the work, I 100. I see your dude. That was like adult, dude. That was that was a tone. That was a sh yeah. That was a tone shift. He went older bro here. He he little broed him a little bit. That's crazy. Vision. If I really want to bring people together and. And I'm not looking to be offensive. I really want. Towards... Hey man, I'm actually trying to hold it together. You're pretty. You're pretty offensive towards towards a lot. That was a very serious. That is a fucking very awkward moment. And I'm not looking to be offensive. I really want to bring people together and get these sales I know, done. But the word, I 100. I see your vision. How do we do? That? Somebody who care. For, well, not don't say Jewish media and Jewish Jewish controlled media. JM. Dude, like, come on, man, you dude. sound You sound like, it, it sounds too much like 1930s Nazi Germany that was leading up to the atrocities. Oh, this, he, he would say JM? Yeah, he was branded JM, that's right. No, it's just the the, the implied, like this um, memeified prejudice towards a group in a way that's going to lead to hate. And I, I know you don't mean that. I know I know you have love in your heart. You know, what's the, you know what's the prejudice towards a group that led to hate? BLM. BLM oh took a my black person. God. Oh. Showed his death on camera because, okay, there are examples of us being killed and being killed on camera. But if it was spread on camera, it was done on purpose by the media because. 14, 20 kids get killed in Chicago every week, and it's not spread that much. They, like you said, singled out a person, directed everything on that person, right, as the martyr, and raised the people that hadn't had any. We didn't have our 40 acres and a mule. We didn't have, you know, like a lot of things, right? Like it's such a strange new way of being anti-black while you're simultaneously talking about like black kids being killed in Chicago. But then you turn around and you're just saying like as though the George Floyd execution by the state wasn't motivated or or rather the, the neglect leading up to that execution is not nearly identical. The systemic roots of both of those issues is the same. It's white supremacy. You can't be a white supremacist and simultaneously bring up kids in Chicago. The people that do that on the right are doing it to deflect away from the main problem because they don't give a shit about the kids in Chicago. You're trying to do it like they do it, but then you also like legitimately will act like you do care, which I think he, there is like an older part of him that does care. He's not understanding that that is a weapon that they wield. It's a shield. It's a deflection. There's no follow-up. Like that black people have not ever been given. So once we're given just a little bit, like your life matters, right? Then we literally like, oh, okay, now we're being hurt, right? But actually the death toll is up. The city uh, where this happened is completely been turned to a war zone. They actually, it's actually something like Candace Owens can actually specify this better, but it's 
like its own city or something. Like they they made it not be a part of the actual state or something. It's like like DC and stuff. It's like mm -hmm. it's like Washington DC now and stuff. Like and that has to what? be from a government. You know that's got higher level agenda written all over it yeah they're using the death of an individual yeah sure the media yeah are. not the, the jewish media the media the and media. that's the media is fucked up that machine bro that's crazy this is a crazy conversation lex is like listen king you can be as bigoted as you want towards black people i love that shit just don't do the jew thing what what, what, what the fuck is he doing at this point he's like dude dude just yeah keep the shitting on thing Keep the anti-black sentiment, but don't come for the Jews is a fucking ridiculous way to, to handle this conversation. He's just saying insane stuff. The, does takes whatever tragedy and uh, pushes it towards whatever narrative that gets more clicks and views and so on. Sure, and then politicians do the same. They use the media, they influence the media to tell a story. And um, I this is a simple thing I'll put. I believe that the idea of anti-Semitism and the the closeness of uh, the Holocaust is used by... And then Kai's like, no, 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 I'm still going to fucking be anti-Semitic. So certain individuals in media to not take accountability for the bad things that, that are happening. And what's happening is there's a new frontier, right? Meaning like, it used to be okay for somebody to be a billionaire. We thought about a, billion, a billionaire, right? You, a lot of times you think I'm actually kind of being out of shape and, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, like Onassis or something, like you thought about it a different way. Now you think about a billionaire, you think about Elon, you think Kim, you think Yay, you think, it's a new kind of billionaire. You know, it's not just Soros is a billionaire. It's a new form of billionaire. Well, right now, what I'm calling for the industry is I'm I'm calling I'm calling the industry out and saying like, hey, it just so happens that there's been times where I had my lawyer was Jewish, my regulator was Jewish, but like like eight people that basically would collude and talk without me were in groups saying, okay, this is what the tour is going to be. This is his next house. And they were making all these decisions and they're making all this money. And at the end, I was like, I ended my tour and I don't have the money. When you talk in groups, that breeds hate. When you talk about individuals, it solves problems. And this, You're in enge engineering. Okay, but this is something I pointed out on Pierce. I said, if a black person gets pulled over with a car and it's three other people in the car, they're also going to jail. They're okay, but you recognize that that's a bad thing. Racial profiling, but and also like weird sentencing rules surrounding uh, uh, weird sentencing rules in the criminal justice system are bad. So like, why the f like did nobody tell Kanye West like, hey, uh, two wrongs don't make a right? It's just oh my god, conservatives are so fucking stupid. It's also a bad analogy. Not all Jewish people are in the car. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even matter because, like, the, the concept revolves around profiling. He's trying to, he is trying to literally say, like, oh, well, they profiled me. They're not going to single them out. They're going to say, you guys are all in collusion. I just described collusion five times. Yeah, it's not even racial profiling. He, that's just how accomplice laws work. Yes, I, I, I know. But what happens is every time if I talk to any of these business people one by one, because mind you, I didn't get to the tweet by not having a conversation. I had the conversations beforehand before I got to the tweet. Now we're going to take it to the stage. Now we're on the world stage, right? And you... I don't think he understands that he's also like ruining an otherwise good point that he could be making. Because like the good point is and the correct point is Capital owners, capital owning executives, especially in the record industry, the record label owners are fucking exploitative. 
Okay, they're awful, they're exploitative, and they they profit off of black plight, they prof profit off of black bodies, and they profit off of everyone in general. But when you just, like, weirdly turn that into some anti-Semitic fucking rant, you literally are destroying your own argument that you were making. Hold on, I gotta turn on the, I gotta open the door for Saw Austin. Saw Ari Emanuel do exactly the kind of thing that I was saying had been done behind closed doors. Now he's doing it in open doors. They told Candace Owens... I couldn't be on the Daily Wire. Like, you can't even explain yourself. And we don't care of how you got to that point either. And that's fucked up. They told Candace you can't be on Daily Wire? Is that Wire? even about... Yes, yeah, she did. That's what they said. And you know what? And you can have my voice raised or lower. I'm going to do it lower, right? Because what's happening to me by... I put in your words... Wait, what did, did they do to Candace that's what Owens? they said. They told Candace you can't be on Daily Wire. Is that Wire? even about? Yes, yeah, she did. That's. What yeah, I wonder why. Ben Shapiro is such a bitch. How you get banned from the Daily Wire? You just say deeply anti-Semitic things. So they probably were like, yeah, we shouldn't have him say this because then Ben is going to have to shit on Kanye West. That's so what they said. And you know what? And you can have my voice raised or lower. I'm going to do it lower, right? Because what's happening to me by, I put in your words, the media is saying, not only can you not explain yourself, we don't care how you got to that point. You need to apologize and you can't explain. And that's the end of the story to so just apologize so we can have Mel Gibson do some more films. Bro, because the problem is not what you think it is. The problem is not Jewish people. Oh, my God. No one is ever going to get to him, dude. It's just like his anti-Semitism has hit like the highest stage you can get. The only stage higher than this is just straight up, like, advocating for the Holocaust. You know what I mean? He's he just like, bro, he literally just compared himself to Mel Gibson. That's crazy. To that same level of frustration. And I just so happen to be the one that's not going to back up on it. So what I'm saying is, but where do we get to this? Because even you, as engineering, as intelligent as you are, you, just like everyone else that I say was colluding, won't let us get to the point of fixing it. Yeah, but I'm not, I think you're more powerful than the media. I'm not saying you need to apologize because of the media. I'm saying everything we've been talking about just because I care for you and I want you to be the best possible man you can be. To me, a definition of a great man, I'm with Martin Luther King on this. You don't talk about Jews or, or black people. You talk about engineering, you talk about humanity, you solve problems. You identify the problems in the world and you don't come from a place of resentment. This group did this, this, fuck all that. Um, that is in the past. You just build solutions. I'm going to create a new record label. I'm going to create a new design firm. I'm going to create a new social network. I'm going to do it better. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it right by the people that I know don't have a voice. I'm going to give them a voice and is talk it, about that. Is it okay to call out collusion? Do people collude in your business under you? Like the engineers that come together and like say they collude against the bosses, right? You know why Bernardo No offered the deal and took it away from me? They collude against the bosses. Oh my God, my man is. He's about to. He's about to come for the unions, dog. He's like the fucking workers are colluding. That's fucked up. I mean, this is just straight Nazi shit. <laughs> anti, anti union resentment. Juice control the media. I mean, he's hitting all the high notes, dude. Collusion. Because I was too powerful with the collective that I had right there. He had to stop that at all costs. They said, for whatever reason, this kid, yay, it has the ability to have all of the Kardashians, Jay-Z and Beyonce, uh, Justin Bieber, Dimna, Virgil, da -da, all these. Yeah, bro. They, yeah, Louis Vuitton didn't want to have you because you were too good. Yeah, no, that's not copium. These people in the same room yeah. working towards the same goal. I've been that person since preschool. That's called a leader, right? For the people in business. Whatever their background is, whether they turn their whether they turn hey, their cell Wap, phones off the on Friday gifted. or not, there's been some bad business done. There's some bad business practices, and we have to change that because this game is like boxing. More people end up retarded than rich, and I'm saying like beat to a pulp, driven crazy, beat by the media to a pulp. Right now, the media has done everything they could 
to make me apologize and to make me look crazy. And that one person has done anything. No, actually, not a single person has ever gotten this much fucking help from every outlet that he's ever been on for so routinely and regularly, openly fucking saying anti-Semitic shit. And the only reason why people are doing that is because of who Kanye West once was. That's it. Mind-boggling that he has gotten this many breaks and people are still trying to save him. Every time they have a conversation with Kanye West, it comes across like they're just telling him, like, listen, don't say this, say this instead. Come on, Kanye, why don't you say this instead? And I don't mean like uh, uh, Kanye would be correct, like the way I'm describing it, where I say Kanye would be correct if he said the problem was capitalism and not anti-Semitism. They try to overlook his anti-Semitism. Thing to find out why I was frustrated enough to do that tweet, and that's facts. And that's fucked up. Is there somebody in your life close to you that that you trust enough to call you out on your bullshit? We're all full of shit sometimes. What's my bullshit? Well, some of it I pointed out today, huh. but I don't what know you deeply bullshit, enough. Though? What was the bullshit? Jewish media, Jewish... That's not bullshit. The bullshit is that the Jewish media no, no. won't admit... Your, your dad was right. <laughs> your dad was right. The, the words you used, the you weren't... The and point I you're... said it. You're not going to make me say it 800 more times. I don't know if it resonated because you keep saying, like, the words. Did it resonate to y'all that y'all ain't do nothing about it? And that all y'all want to do is have somebody apologize and sweep under the rug your bullshit that you've been doing the whole time. Shit, he's coming after Lex, too. He said, like, he's, he's not. What the fuck? Dude, that change up is crazy. What the fuck? Bro, that's that's wild. Took him an hour and fifty two to fucking get to the point where he's like, "Time, you yeah, you on the same bullshit as the other people." So you're doing the same thing that the other, let's say, media, because I'm not allowed to yeah. say, has done. So until somebody which is what, up, which is what, man, is, which is what is I'm trying to call you out in your bullshit because I hope I'm somebody you can trust. I that's don't it. fucking trust you. Well, you should find... Bro, this is so awkward. What the fuck? Yo, what the fuck? Oh, no. I mean, you didn't see this coming, bro. I didn't think he was going to pop off on him like that and be like, you're, you're like them. You're with them. Find people in your life you can trust. Don't tell me what I should do. I'm not one of your BLM marchers. Listen, I'm with you on the BLM. Uh, a lot of organizations. You no, he's not talking about BLM, the organization, Lex. He's talking about Black Lives Matter, the movement, okay? Don't act like he's just criticizing the organization. Why are you still deflecting for this dude? He just came at you directly and said he doesn't trust you. You're one of them, and you're just like, oh, well, you know, I, you trust me, Kanye. I don't like BLM either. Come on. Come on, Kanye. He was tragedy. It, it and um and I watched the Candace Owens documentary. And what what was your take on it? I think it's important to question the mainstream narratives, but well, I don't agree with it. I still believe that George Floyd uh died from the knee of the cop, not from fentanyl. And and even if that was the case, there's still fifty percent of black deaths is actually abortion. Bro, what the fuck? If I go to the restaurants in Opportunity Zones and we look at the calorie rating and the cholesterol, I will tell you that my people are sick. If we look at the obesity rate, uh, if you go to just uh, a, a restaurant somewhere in, in middle America, Denny's or something, I went to Denny's the other day, you will see that my people are sick. And my people meaning all people, Right. But black people are very influential to all people. So, right. If so, if the media picks uh, a overweight black woman and says this is body goals, then the media are influencing my people to stay sick. And it just so happens that that night I was so frustrated after 20 years that I had to call it out in one tweet. Dude, what the fuck? Again, when he talks about like 
super high calorie, not exactly nutrient dense foods. There's a legitimate reason to, to critique that, right? It's a structural issue. It's about poverty. How the fuck do you go back to the media colluding with Jewish people, like the Jewish media doing that to black people? How the fuck do you go to Lizzo? Lizzo's like anti fat shaming movement is just simply to stop harming fat people because fat shaming doesn't actually cause people to lose weight it's just demonstrably proven not to okay no one is like hey you should not be healthy but you also recognize why people aren't healthy if you're going to talk about why people aren't healthy not because like there is some collusion well there is some collusion actually the reason why people aren't healthy is because of capitalist collusion collusion between food producers government subsidies that they get and how much they market uh, unhealthy foods to people, and uh, how they present unhealthy food options, and sometimes even limit healthier food options. That part is the capitalist collusion, all for the profit motive in general. That now, even if I say, hey, okay, I was frustrated for these reasons, now it's not good enough. You've literally tried to make me re-apologize 10 times in this meeting, re-say this, re-say that, but... It doesn't change the fact that my people are sick and I'm the only person in my position that will say that my people are sick. But I got to tell you, I have to be honest. Um, I don't, this is silly because you don't know me, but it, it hurt when you say you don't trust me. You kind of lost me. I don't think anyone's ever said that to me. I don't know, man. Fuck that. You're, I'm not, I don't care about uh, views or clickbait or any of that bullshit. Um, I just thought you were one of the great, greatest artists ever. It'd be cool to talk to you. And I just, I feel like you got pain you're working through. I never had anyone say that to me. I, I, maybe I'm just being a mess about it, I guess. That's fucked up though. But maybe it's not. Maybe you shouldn't trust it. But, but I just haven't had that experience. I, yeah. Do you think I would trust anybody at this point in my life? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I hear you. And uh, I, it's it's also kind of good to see how much strength you got. You're not broken by any of this. You're under a lot of attack, a lot of attack by a lot of people. You have a vision and you're trying to feel your way through it. And you might get destroyed for it. That's the human, uh, that's the risk you take. It's a wonderful life though. What do you hope your legacy is? To be forgotten. You think That's be- bullshit. He does not want that. Uh, okay, I'm done. I can't do the rest of this, bro. This this fucking sucks. He he like like kind of shameful. It's a shameful thing to watch, and I also don't want to watch his advice for young people or regret. Shameful on the host or yay side? No, it's even shameful on the host side for like getting fucking hosed down by Kanye saying like insanely anti-Semitic shit, trying to push back at it, refusing. For, I mean him refusing to fucking recognize it literally kaya was openly fucking said to him to his face like bro i don't trust you that was hard as fuck to watch man that's crazy i don't think he would have done that if it wasn't kaya west let's be real uh, he, he's just no other person on the planet could just like be openly and agitatingly anti-semitic to a jewish man like that on their own fucking podcast that's crazy to me i can't believe kaya was made me feel bad about legs yeah no i i felt icky watching that I felt bad for Lex Friedman, straight up. 